Today, I'll be teaching you everything you need to know about VEX IQ pneumatics. Pneumatics were introduced into VEX IQ during the full volume season. They are very helpful in giving you a new way to move things around on your robot. Understanding and being able to use pneumatics will give you an advantage over many others competing in this year's season. With this video, I aim to equip you with all the tools necessary to fully integrate pneumatics into your robot designs. This is the air pump. It compresses air and then sends it to the solenoid for further use. It will also send air to the tank. This is the air tank. It stores backup air sent to it by the pump in case of emergencies. When multiple cylinders demand too much air, the tank will step in and reduce the tension. This is the solenoid. Its job is to take air from the pump and tank and then use that air to control the pneumatic cylinders. It takes direct commands from the brain and is connected to both it and the air pump by cable. This is pneumatic tubing. We use this to connect the different components. Air will travel between them using this tubing. These are pneumatic fittings. They can connect multiple pieces of tubing. They also support the tubes with the one by one connector stud on the bottom that locks into beams. Your last component is the pneumatic cylinder. These will receive air from the previous systems and use that air to extend and retract, creating a push or pull movement somewhere on your robot. First, we will need to plant down our robot brain so it will supply power to the pneumatic system. Next, put down your solenoid. I put my solenoid in the middle since it will have to connect to all the other components. Now we will need to connect the brain to the solenoid via cable. The air pump goes down next. Make sure to connect the air pump to the solenoid via the cord already attached to the air pump. Our last component before the cylinders is the air tank. Make sure to place the air tank somewhat close to the air pump because next we'll have to connect the two. We will need to put tubing on both the air pump and the air tank and then attach the two via a fitting. Attaching the tubing to the components can sometimes be a hassle. I've noticed that twisting it onto the components can make it a little bit easier. We will now add a small piece of tubing and then a fitting to diverge the two tubes into two different inserts on the solenoid. Make sure you place the divergent tubes onto the two inserts labeled P. Now I'm placing down supports for the cylinders and the cylinders themselves. Now is a good time to mention that the solenoid has two sides which correspond to the two cylinders. I will label the cylinders as such. Also note that the top two inserts on the solenoid are the A side and the bottom two inserts on the solenoid are the B side. Make sure you correspond this to the A and B labels on the cylinders themselves. Now that the tubes are inserted correctly, I will straighten up the tubing and wiring of the system using cable anchor pieces. To start, we will want to click Add a Device. Select Pneumatic. Choose the port in which you connected the solenoid to the brain. If you made a mistake when matching the A and B inserts on the solenoid to the ones on the cylinder, you can fix that here by selecting Reverse. You also have the option to rename your cylinders to make them easy to recognize later in the code. There are two different code blocks relating to pneumatics. You can find these by going to the motion category and scrolling to the pneumatic subsection. Your two main blocks have two sub blocks each. This gives us a total of four blocks, which are cylinder extend, cylinder retract, pump on, and pump off. To access cylinder retract and pump off, we will have to click the box at the end of the respective blocks to open the drop down menu. From there, simply click retract or off. To code these commands on a controller is a little more tricky. When adding a controller, you will notice that you cannot just click on the buttons to add the function. However, we will still need the controller added as a device, so don't cancel it. Instead, what we will do is go to the block section named Events and drag over two when controller button pressed blocks. I will use the E up button to extend my cylinders. Make sure you add both 
cylinder one extend and cylinder two extend under the E-up block for simultaneous motion. Now repeat the process to retract your cylinders, but this time use the button E down. To save time, you can always copy and paste pieces of your code to avoid drag time. Our last step is to add the pump on block under the when started block. You are now ready to download your code. Before we start, take note of the placement of the studs on this 6x12. These will be used as markings to show where the different shafts will go later. To start, add a motor shaft onto the 6x12 for your motor. Next, add a 24 tooth gear onto your motor shaft. Do not put a collar on yet. Insert an idler pin into a 1x4 beam as I did. We will attach a second 24 tooth gear to the idler pin and then slide the 1x4 onto the motor shaft with the gear facing the plate. Make sure the 1x4 is able to freely move and then lock in the motor shaft with a collar. Insert a metal cap shaft into the same hole that I did in the video. Slide a 12 tooth gear followed by a collar onto the shaft. I used a wide tooth gear to help with friction, but that is optional if you do not have any. Repeat this step using another metal cap shaft on the same hole as I do in the video. You should now be able to spin both cap shaft gears by turning the motor shaft gear. Insert a 0 x 3 cap pin into the end of your pneumatic cylinder to connect to the 1 x 4 beam. Connect a 0 0.5 pitch standoff and a standoff connector to the bottom of your cylinder to connect it to the plate in the same hole that I did. Now when the pneumatic cylinder is completely retracted, it will spin one 12 tooth gear, and when it is completely extended, it will spin the other 12 tooth gear. To add to the model, you can insert a 0 x 2 idler pin two holes away from the bottom gear. Follow this up with a 36 tooth gear. Now insert a 0 x 2 idler pin three holes away from the other 12 tooth gear and attach a 60 tooth gear. Now when fully extended, the 60 tooth gear will be spun and when fully retracted, the 36 tooth gear will be spun. Adjust this model to your liking to make your own PTOs. The lesson of this video is that if you reach out with a will to learn, you will get good at robotics. You may feel that your work is nothing compared to the teams you're competing against on a worldwide scale, but that is not true. What you build does matter, so don't let any big shots out there make you think otherwise. You are good enough to win. Keep grinding and believe in yourself. You will make it in no time. And in conclusion! Never back down, never what? Never give up. Yeah, I want it louder though. Never back down, never what? Never give up. Never back down, never what? Never give up! Let's run it! Let's go! Woo!